Hello, I'm Linda McIntosh from Studio ABC for my Facebook group, art group, and my YouTube channel are under the same name. Notice that the C is spelled S-E-E -E, because we see the art. But most of my students call me Miss Mac. In today's lesson, we're going to continue with elements of art and continue looking at line. We're also going to look at the element of art called space. Uh, actual line and implied line are the two lines we're going to focus on today. Uh, space is negative and positive space. And we will, at the end of this video, I'll give you instructions for how to make an implied line name project. Okay, we're going to do a quick review of the elements of art. Elements of art include value, line, shape, form, texture, color, and space. So far, we've just talked a little bit about line pretty much and we're going to continue some of that today. These are your building tools that you use to build uh, the principles of design later and then turn it into an art composition. And when you build a house you need all these tools and when you build a composition you're going to need art tools. Elements of art are art tools. We talked about line being one of the elements of art. We talked about vertical lines running up and down, horizontal lines running side to side, diagonal lines being slanted lines that are not vertical or horizontal. We talked about curved lines. We didn't really mention straight lines too much because that's something that everybody just assumes. But I think I did mention to you or allude to it that if you need to make a straight line, you don't have to worry about using a ruler. That's fine. Use something to make that straight line work the way things work for you. Curved lines can show movement. It's really a good thing to use if you're trying to show movement in one of your picture. Zigzag lines can often portray uh, like anger or something negative like sharp teeth or danger of some sort, lightning. We talked about actual line. Actual line is a, is a real line. It is a line that you can actually see that's been placed or made in nature. Uh, as opposed to, we didn't get too much into implied line, but we'll do that today. But actual line is the opposite of implied line. So we'll talk about that a little later. Contour lines are probably what you're most familiar with because that's the way most people begin drawing. They draw the outside edges of surfaces that they see. So contour lines are like defining only the edges of something. You might consider it to be an outline of an object. This is the way that most people draw with contour line, actual line that they make with their pencils, outlining something. But not all drawings are done this way and as you progress in your art, you'll learn other ways. To do drawings. This is an imaginary line called implied line. You kind of see it with your eye even though it's not really there. Your eye fills it in for you and you know that it's a dancer. So we have done our three minute review now and we're going to move on to some new ideas. So we're going to do a pretty thorough uh, investigation of the elements of art and today we'll, we'll talk more about line and uh, space, but you, you're you going to need these elements of art and understand them so that you can make choices when you're doing your art, intelligent choices about what you want to achieve. Let's look at the language of the art lesson first. We are going to turn to the vocabulary section of your art journals and copy the following words and definitions neatly into your journal. You can go right under the last set so that you're saving paper and you can push pause on this frame. When you get this done, you can un undo the pause and go on. Okay, if you're watching this again, that means you're all finished with your vocabulary words and we can start talking some more about elements of art and what we're going to do today. The two terms that you see on this video now are actual line and implied line. And actual line is a line that actually exists, that actually has been made with some kind of marking instrument, while implied line does not really exist. It's not real, but it seems to exist in our mind. Our, our brain fills in the space 
fills in the blank, in other words. You've seen this photo before in the previous video in part one, but I just wanted to remind you that line, actual line, is a mark that makes a real line, such as lines painted on a highway. Even the words you're reading in any book or here on the page are made of lines. Dotted and dash lines are still lines. They're considered lines. See the lane lines down the middle of the highway? Those have been made with a painting instrument. There are lines that exist in nature also. Look at the negative space where there are no lines. It appears to make a rope or a string through the picture. Impli it's actually implied line and not drawn. It's actually negative space and the rope is created by that negative space that has no contour line around it. Remember, contour line is outlining the edges of something. This is a famous painting by Grant Wood called American Gothic. Can you find implied lines in Grant Wood's painting? If you were to draw a picture of this painting using actual line, it might look something like the color sheet on the right. The lines on the right are contour lines defining the edges of the surfaces that are actually, or the forms, that are actually in Grant Wood's painting on the left. Implied lines. Okay, let's take a look at these three pictures. We'll study these so that it will help you get ready to make your own implied line design. In the top example, the white lines above are not actually drawn. They're negative curved spaces created by the straight lines around it. In the hibiscus flower below that, it's created by changing the direction of the lines of con to contrast with the background. It's not actually drawn lines around that flower. The portrait of the girl is not outlined, but it's created with uh, lines that form words such as Jennifer and Lawrence. The occupied space or positive space is filled with words. However, it creates a positive space out of the negative space. Does that make sense? Okay, let me explain that. Part of the words become positive space in this picture, just such as the shadows in her hair and her eyes and the features. But most of the picture is actually formed out of negative space that is left by filling in the background. The artist used a different method here by crisscrossing the lines to make the shadows and to form the puppy's face. This might be a little more difficult, but you might want to try it. Um, the implied line here is very prominent because your eye has to fill in the outline around the puppy. Uh, there is no actual line around the puppy's face. It's just where lines have crisscrossed, they have formed shadows. This is another method of forming implied line. Implied line can also be used by leaving out unimportant parts of the drawing. When you first saw this picture, when it first appeared on the screen, you probably knew immediately that it was a girl um, leaning on her hands, kind of pushed forward, her posture pushed forward. You may not have noticed that there were even any lines missing at first glance. And then as you explore it, you realize that there is no line at the back of her body. In this example, implied line refers to what is left out. If the artist had included them, it might have deterred from you seeing the focus that the artist wanted you to see. Drawing saw no need to include the back because he, they were focusing on the face and the posture. When I found this example, I thought, oh, this is a great example to show my students. But on closer inspection, I realized this is not implied line. The chair is outlined. On taking a closer look here, you'll see the outlines of the chair. There's still negative space, but it's not technically uh, implied line. What do you see here? It might take a moment, but you should see a dancer. Not all the lines are there, but your eye will fill them in for you. The artist didn't feel a need to fill in every line. The artist knew that your eye would fill it in and you would be able to see the picture without every single detail. So what kinds of lines would you see in this uh, composition? Right, you would see actual lines where the black lines are drawn and implied lines where they're left out and your eye fills them in. 
Study these pictures for a moment and see if you can find both implied and actual lying. This is a famous painting called Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. He included both actual line, look at the buildings, and look at the tops of the hills, and implied line, take a look at the sky. Can you see what he implied? This brings us to some examples of some of the projects that you're going to do today. Remember from art vocabulary words that negative space is the unoccupied space, the blank space? We're going to form implied lines by using blank space. Alexis did not draw her name, but left it blank and filled in line patterns all around it because she filled in the spaces around the letters of her name. Our eye perceives the lettering because she filled in all the space with line designs. Her name becomes implied line. On Aaron's composition, he also filled in all the space around his name with actual line. The space he left negative is perceived by our eyes as white lines, although it's not outlined. If he had outlined his name, it would cease to be implied line. And his teacher would ask him to start over. Here Maximilian feared that he wouldn't have enough space to fit his whole name on the page. He has a very long name. He could have shortened it to Max, but he decided to use his initials instead, and that works. Notice that the little dashed lines around his name don't actually outline, I mean, they, the dashed lines do outline the, the initials, but they're not connected, so it's not a continuous line. He still has implied lines in his initials. I hope you're ready to begin your own implied line name designs. So let's get started and see what the steps are to creating. One of the things I like to remind you right up front is to place your full name, hour, and class number neatly on the back of your paper. This is important so I can identify who the grade belongs to. The supplies you will need is unlined paper. We do not use notebook paper with lines on it for our art. So if that's the only thing, if you would be at home doing this and that's the only thing you have, try looking on the inside of a cereal box or some kind of a food container because a lot of times they have white interiors that you can draw on. You will also need a pencil and I didn't put it in the list but you'll need an eraser because the pencil lines that you make are going to be erased. Your choice then of either markers, colored pencils, colored pens, watercolors, whatever, use whatever you have, but combining these materials often makes attractive designs and we call that mixed media art. I'm a mixed media artist and I love this type of art where you combine different materials. I haven't covered color with you yet, but let me give you a little hint. When you start choosing your markers, colored pencils, colored pens, whatever you choose, it might be a good idea to limit the number of colors and have a color palette that you're going to use. I noticed that Alexis and Aaron and Maximilian used almost every color that was available. And sometimes a limited palette is much more expressive and much prettier. You might consider that when you choose your uh, supplies. Okay, the procedure. Very lightly, very, very lightly. You are going to sketch block or bubble letters of your name across the paper. You're going to erase these lines later, so you must not press down hard. Don't outline the letters of your name. Leave the lettering blank. If you forgot this step, I'll ask you to st start over. Fill the entire page around your name with deliberately drawn actual lines to create an interesting pattern. No scribbles. That's just, that just doesn't work on this kind of a design. When you finish filling in all the spaces with line, and leaving your name blank, negative space. Carefully erase any pencil line around your name uh, that you put in to begin with, and it should reveal a very clear representation of your name or your initials. I can't wait to see what you do with this. If you see the symbols below the video here, there's a thumbs up. If you would click that, it helps my channel, and I would really appreciate that. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you in part three.